we could graph it, and I'll show you guys what the graphs would look like here in just a second. But to evaluate the limits here, I might say, uh, you know, let me, let me go back to using my algebraic definition. Let's do the limit as x goes 0 from the left of g of x is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of g of x. And when we do it in this case, when we evaluate now, we have 0 minus 1, absolute value, has to equal negative square root of negative 0. Well, 0 minus negative 1, or 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Absolute value of 1 is 1 equals 0. Uh-oh, they do not exist. Uh, they are not the same. So this limit does not exist, right? But what kind of continuity? Is this a hole? Is this why it doesn't exist? Is this an asymptote? Like, what does this look like? So just to kind of give you guys you know, a little review, there's the absolute value function. Here's the radical function, right? Kind of talked about those parent graphs. This is just what absolute value of x graphs looks like, and this is what x looks like. So this x plus 1, what is that really doing to the graph? Just shifting over to the right one, right? So it's going from here, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. OK? Now here, when you have a negative on the outside, that reflects it about the x-axis. And a negative on the inside reflects it about the y-axis. So basically, we're taking this, reflecting it one way, reflecting it the other way. So that looks like that. All right? But now let's talk about the constraints. This graph is only good for when it's greater than 0. So greater than or equal to 0. So basically, everything to the left gets eliminated. And this graph is only good for when x is less than 0, not equal to 0. So therefore, right here is a hole. So now you guys can visually see, oh, that's a jump discontinuity. It's not continuous. Jump continuity. Okay, questions? All right.